Okay, so let me show you how to do Rhino creating a 3D object, and we're going to do it like the easy button. So um, the easy way would be to just use shapes and tools that are already on Rhino, um, and we're going to use just some simple lines. We're going to use uh, some curves and text. So the first thing you got to do is, since we are printing small, we need to make it in small objects inches. Okay, I want everyone to use the same settings. Small objects, inches. Don't worry about what layer you are using. You can do it in black, you can do it in blue, you can do it in red. It won't affect what's going on. We're going to do 3D. And I like to look at top view first and design a 2D design in top view and then extrude it, which makes it 3D, and you'll see what it looks like in the front right and perspective view. So I'm going to start with kind of a simple idea here. So I'm going to get my... Um, I'm going to get this polyline tool, and I'm going to move this over here, and I'm just going to create kind of a simple, let's still do the two by three, so that's three inches wide, and then I might do some shape like this, and I don't know, I'm going to start with something kind of simple, okay, so at some point, you're going to create a shape, and the key here is this shape has to be continuous, and it absolutely must connect at all levels. You know it connects everywhere um, when you draw it. Now watch this. If you just do one tool and you go around to the end, let's try a uh, some kind of a circular shape. So I click here, click here, click here, go around this way, whatever. And I do something like that. You'll see at some point, it all just kind of comes together. And on this click, if I click it once, it's all one shape. That's a continuous shape. We can make this 3D. What we cannot do is have a shape like the following. You can't go something like this, whatever, and then just hit enter and leave it like that because this is not a closed shape. You can't make a 3D object if part of the shape is just open. So from top view, it's got to connect. It's got to be a connecting line. So you can use O oh snap. Remember O snap? O snap down here. Object snap. Click end. Let's zoom back out. And then what I can do, as long as O snap is on, I can use a polyline or a poly curve or control point curve, excuse me. And I can hover here towards the end and click on there. And as long as it's touching that end point, I hit enter. And then I have two lines. If I zoom in, I can see that they, they touch. Let's zoom in over here. See, those, those two lines do touch. But the problem is they have to be connected. This has to be one continuous closed shape. And in order to do that, we need to select both lines. And then there's this little tool called Join, but it looks like two puzzle pieces. You just click it, and if everything is yellow, that means you've just joined it. And you should look up at the top to see it say two curves joined into one closed curve. Let's zoom in on that so you can see it. See that? Two curves joined into one closed curve. Now, oh, let me get that showing up. Hold on. Let me show you what it looks like if it's not joined together. You've got to see that, that message that says two shapes joined into one curve. I'm going to uncheck end, and I'm going to do something similar. I create a shape here, and I want to connect it. So I zoom in, I connect, and I think I got it. Hit enter. Guys, watch this. Now, I'm going to zoom in to show you. See how they don't connect there? And they don't connect over here. So watch. If I try to use the join tool, and I click it, Look what it says, unable to join curves. Let's zoom in on that. See this? Unable to join curves. That's because they are not touching at the ends. So in order to fix it, my recommendation is you just delete this one line, get O snap checked, click on end, and then connect them where it says end. You see how it says end now? Let's zoom in on that. So you get towards it, and suddenly, it, wherever it says end, if you click, 
it will be at the end. And just hit enter, and then you're done. Okay? Then we have to join them. So if you can click join, and then it'll say select object for join. So I can click here, click here, and now it says two curves joined into one closed curve. With this closed curve, we can make a 3D object. So step one, after you open up Rhino, is to get a one closed curve. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to do one more time and get a shape that I'm interested in doing. And so I'm going to do three inches long here. And I'm not, I'm not going to go the full two inches. I'm just going to go up here a bit and go down there. Okay. Now, step one, I created a closed curve. Step two is where it starts getting fun. I want to create a surface. And a surface, it actually has three dimensions to it. So since it's a surface, I'm going to click on surface. And I'm going to do what's called extrude curve. And I'm just going to choose straight. And look at the front view now. See my front view? You can move it up and down. Now for this assignment, we're only going a quarter of an inch. Each of these minor gray lines is a quarter of an inch. So just click that. And when you're done, let's go into perspective and zoom in. See that? You can see there is the surface. However, the surface is hollow. See that? It's kind of hollow inside. We need to make that all solid. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. And one of the things I like to do is I like to go into the shaded viewport or shade here. And let's just double click in perspective. Now look at this. I can get this little tool here. This is the rotate view. And take a look at that shape. If I load it like this, I can see that grid below. And if I move it around, you can see that this is basically the surface is kind of like a fenced in yard, but it's not enclosed because there's nothing capping the top or the bottom of it. So what I need to do now is go from a surface to a solid. And the way you do that is by capping it. And it's under solid or on command. Let's just go to the command view. Watch this. You go to command, you can just start typing cap and you hit enter. And check, take a look at this. Let's go hit the shaded point on perspective again. You see that? And let's zoom around it. See, it's no more like a, it's not like a fenced in yard. It's like a closed building, right? If you like metaphors or similes. See? So when it's a solid, it's more like a building that has a roof and a floor. And when it's a surface, it's more like a fenced-in yard that people can still climb over and come from underneath moles or whatever. And so you've got to have it as a solid. So to recap, I'm going to, re, 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 um, I'm going to undo the last few things. Hold on, i got to hit enter. I'm going to undo the last few things. Step one, you draw a closed curve. Step two, you extrude it, and that's under surface. Surface, extrude curve, straight. And to choose the height, remember, do it a quarter of an inch high. You don't need it much higher. Quarter of an inch high. And then you want to select that surface and go to solid and choose cap. And it's cap planar holes is what it's fully called. Cap planar holes. Okay. Closed, serve, uh, closed curve, extruded surface, capped solid. So it's draw extrude, cap. Now, there's two more things you can do, and that is you can join other objects together, or you can use one object to cut out another one. So let's do this. My recommendation is you put a little text on this object. So to get text, click the text object layer, and it opens up text object. It says what text you want to create. Pick a nice bold font, and make sure you select Solid. So let's just zoom in on this one again, like we did others. So you see that? There's my text object. And I want to choose under create, I want to choose solids. And then how high is it and how solid is it? Solid means it's going to be a quarter of an inch thick and it's going to be a third of an inch tall. So let's try that out and see what it looks like. Okay, you see that word rhino? It's going to fit right there. Let me zoom out a little bit. 
And on here, I'm going to use the, my mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. Okay? So there's my text. And there's my solid. Well, hold on. There we go. There's my solid. There's my text. Can you see what problem I have right now? Yeah, my text is entirely embedded in my solid. And to prove it, let's go look at perspective view using the shader. You see that? It just barely sticks up. Let's zoom in over here. You see that, Rhino? It's barely sticking. You're not going to be able to read that. It's going to be way too thin. So what you have to do is you have to choose one of the objects. You could choose the solid one and move it down. Or you could pick the text and move it up. So let's go to perspective, and now let's zoom in on there. See that? That's easy to read. It stands up. So if you want to have your text stand up and out of your object, you can let your text go up another quarter of an inch. So when the whole thing is done, it can be a half an inch high as long as it's just text that's coming up. So I found about a quarter of an inch is about right. So you could actually click your text and move it a little higher. But the key is it still needs to intersect. If it doesn't intersect, you're going to be up left with a bunch of letters just floating. So the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure they're all connected into one solid. So the way to do that is you highlight everything, and you're going to put this as one solid using what's called Boolean union. You're going to have a more perfect union right there. See? Boolean union. Now, if I hold down my mouse, I can see there's other solid tools. I want this one. You see how there's two spheres kind of together? Watch what happens when I click it. Notice everything is selected right now. I click here, Boolean union, and I wait. And then I'm going to go find out if it was successful. It says creating meshes, and I don't see a warning, so I think I'm okay. And let's find out. I'm going to click on this shape. And you see how I click on one thing and everything is yellow? That means everything is connected. This is all one solid object. So if you want text on your object, I highly recommend you use the T tool and you use solid. And once you put it in there, make sure it fits inside, offset it, and do that Boolean union. OK? By the way, there's still that curve left over. You can just click it and delete it, and you're good. OK? All right, so does that make sense? If you want to cut something out of another shape, you can do something interesting. Let me just show you what's called Boolean difference, and then I'll be done. I'm going to create another solid, and I'm going to carve out a little, a little niche out of this corner here. So I'm going to do a circle. Actually, I'm going to just use this. I'm going to click in here, drag it out. OK, so I have a curve now. And what I want to do is make this a solid. So I'm going to go to uh, Surface. And I'm going to do Extrude Curve Straight. And now if you really want to, if you want to save yourself a step, you see where it says Cap equals No? Click it. And when you're done, it's going to cap the whole object. OK? Now the key here, guys, is you want to extrude it up here. If you're going to cut something out, you got to make sure it goes through all the way through the entire object. So let me just focus on front view. Hold on. You see the front view? I have to have this object go below it and all the way above it. If I don't do that, it's not going to work properly. So I'm click it and go back to full view. So now I've got one object, and let's zoom out on perspective. See perspective? Let's kind of move around on perspective mode. You see that? So you kind of have two objects. It looks like they're connected. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this cylinder to cut out that uh, section out of that rhino piece there. So what we're going to do is Boolean difference. So all you have to do is hold this down. Try it again. Hold it down. And it's the second one over. Boolean difference. And the first set is the cutting set, I believe. So I'm going to click on it. And then it will say, press enter for second set. You see that? Press enter for second set. I hit enter. 
And now it wants to know what my second set of surfaces is. That's this. And then I'm going to hit enter. And I did it the wrong way, so let me undo that. Sorry. Let's try it again. Boolean difference. I apologize. You want to select what you want cut first. Hit enter. Then you want to select what you're going to cut it with and hit enter. And now it's gone. Let's zoom out and I'll show you the end result. Look at over here. In my perspective view, see what I did? I cut a section out of that rhino piece. And I'll, now that I'm done, I'm just going to click that circle and hit delete. You can make Swiss cheese. Too bad we can't print in cheese. That should be kind of cool. I would pay a lot of good money to get a cheese printer. And you guys want to back me? It could be a Kickstarter program. No? Okay. And yeah, and then let's just make we'll make we'll make Swiss cheese using Rhino. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you'll back me financially, won't you? No. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. There's one. Okay, I'm giving you everything at once. Don't worry. I'll walk you through these again. There's more, and that is this has to be saved as hey, hold, wait, has to be saved as a stereolithography file. Guys, when you are done, you're gonna choose file, save as. It's gotta be saved as. You're gonna click it. By the way, you gotta pause dramatically when you say save as. Okay. Okay, so where was I? There's a folder in here. I need to know the right folder. Basically, there is a 3D folder under um, the digital media folder, you'll see 3D print projects, ATL. And then I have these plastic powder. Don't even worry about those folders. We're going to print it in whatever we can print it in. And you want to give it a name with your initials. I'll put CW for mine. And I'll just put Rhino. And here's the key, folks. And I'm going to zoom in for this one. Magnifying glass. Save as type. Look at this. You got to save it as stereolithography. See that? So I'm going to choose stereolithography. It's halfway down my list of options. And it's STL. If you don't save it like this, we won't print it. It won't be printed on the 3D printer. Okay. Now, oh, there's this mesh export. All you really have to do here is just click OK. Trust that Rhino knows what it's doing. Click OK, and then you're good. And at that point, you are done. If you save it in the right folder, we will, I will try to make sure that gets printed before finals. And so that on the day of finals, hopefully you'll be able to get your 3D object and print it out. So I'd like you guys to get this submitted by Tuesday if you can, just to ensure that it will work. Otherwise, uh, Thursday you can finish it up then too. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this video and then I'll answer any questions you may have.